and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Derry Patrick, Herb Manager at Chagas Grange, Michael McManus, to give an update on the upcoming breeding season. I first ask Michael, how did calving go this spring? So we were very happy with how the calving went this year. Uh, we had 99 cows and heifers calving down and we had 99 live calves. Um, three mortalities and three sets of twins. Um, the calving started on, on February the 2nd and last and the last cow calved on the 16th of April. So it was just over a 10 week calving season with 81 calves born in the first six weeks um, with average calving date of the 2nd of March. The calving season was, was a week shorter than last year, which was planned when I stopped AI in, la- in last year during the breeding season. So, so last year we only went for a nine, nine week breeding season. Um, so, so the nine week breeding season left us with a ten and a half week calving season. So finishing the calving two weeks before breeding, this allowed me more time to prepare for my breeding season and get the vaccine, the calves vaccinated and dehorning up to date before I had to settle down and, and, and start uh, focusing on the breeding. Michael, you started the breeding season in Derry Patrick three weeks ago. How has it been going? Yes, Catherine, breeding season has been going quite well this year with 90% of the cows and heifers submitted in the first three weeks. Uh, breeding will finish around the beginning of July. This will be an eight or eight to nine week breeding season. Cows are all in good body condition This body condition score this year. Um, I find getting out cows getting, getting the cows out early has helped with the first 30 cows and calves turned out on the 1st of March, with the remaining cows being turned out in mid-March. Uh, the majority of cows had at least one cycle of them before the, the before the breeding season. Getting the cows out early also took the pressure off shed space and reduced the chance of scour outbreak in the, in, in the herd. And you're using 100% AI. How are you detecting cows in heat? Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, you're using 100% AI. We're using the AMPM rule for breeding. Um, this involves breeding any cows seen in heat in the morning. That, um, they're bred in the evening any cows seen bowling in the evening, they're um, bred the following morning. So the cows are checked in the morning at 7 a.m. They're checked once or twice during the day, and they're also checked during the evening. Um, all cows and heifers are tail painted yellow to start with, and once they are, ser- once they are served, then we use the tail, uh, blue tail paint. And so all, also each group has a teaser bull with them, and he also has a chin ball attached. So the, the tail paint is and the tail paint is, is topped up every 10 days. So I find the tail paint works very well and it's an easy way of identifying a cow, let's say the next morning, who's missing her tail paint. There's a good chance that she was a she was a bull during the night. So that's just finding the tail paint and the chin ball work, work hand in hand with a few checks during the day. And how are you managing getting cows in out of paddocks at the moment? So the the cows or heifers are they're removed from the paddock using a wire reel. So Liam, who works in the herd, me attaches the reel, the reel onto the wire on one side of the gate and the paddock, and he can walk into the bunch of cows or the heifers and be able to remove the, um, the removed animal that he requires. And um, so here in Grange, we are lucky to have a good paddock system in place, but but this still can be applied in any farm where the reel can be used to guide animals into the handling facilities. Once the animals get used to the system, it's, it seems to be working very well for us anyway at the minute. So. And would you have to bring in a good few cows in order to get the one you needed, or how do you manage that? Um, in some cases, you can you might get the cow you require, and in other cases, you might get two or three cows. But generally, you'll be bringing two two cows from the paddock this time of year. We're we're breeding anything from maybe two to seven cows a day. So, but generally, we generally get the, the cows you require plus maybe one or two. It's it's easier than bringing in the full batch of cows, I find. Most definitely, and at the moment. You have a lot of the sires that you're going to be using selected. What are you looking for in a sire that you're using this year? Um, so let's say it's a trial. There's an, we have an ongoing trial, so we're using a range of bulls um, made up of four different breeds: uh, Cemental, Charlie, Limousine, which are used in the cows, and then we're, we're using Angus on the heifers. So there's two teams of bulls being used: one balanced team made up of high replacement index bulls and high terminal index bulls, and then the other team of bulls are are high terminal only bulls so the bulls they have to meet strict criteria for the trial and some of the requirements must be that the bull must be five stars across breeds and four stars four stars within breeds and also he has to be easy calving 
So the bulls selected for the cows must be under 8% calving and difficulty on the beef cow scale. And um, for the heifers, they must be under 6% on the heifer scale. So easy calving is very important with us, especially with the heifers as we were calving them down at 24 months of age. So it's, it's quite important for us for the, uh, definitely that, the, that we get an easy calving Angus bulls. What sires, Michael, are you using on the cows? So, so Catherine, we're using 16 bulls in total. Um, to name a few some familiar bulls people might be familiar with. So we're using the balanced bull, a high terminal, higher placement bull there of Curraheen Earp, S12152. Um, another limousine bull there would be Castleview Casino. And then um, another household name of a limousine bull is Elite Ice Cream, LM2206. He's a high terminal bull. That's, that's a, They're just some of the, the bulls. We're also using... Um, Loki CH4159, another Charlie bull, which is well used throughout the country. They're used on the heifer, on the cows, I should say. Um, and then on the heifers, we're using uh, four different bulls, uh, one of them being a Red Angus, uh, um, ZEP, and an, another, another one of the bulls is Cornamuckla Lord Hardy, KYA. Michael, it has been a difficult spring. What's grass supply like on the farm at the moment? Yes, Catherine, as you were saying, it has been a quite difficult spring. Um, grass growth has been well below average for, for April and early May. Um, we originally had set, we originally had 80 acres set aside for silage, um, but in mid to late April, we grazed 30 acres of this. The cows were given 24 hour allocations of grass and they cleaned out the paddocks very well. This land has since been closed and will be cut, cut for silage in late June. Um, we had no other option only to graze some of the silage ground as we had no silage left over to buffer feed the cows. Um, so this week we have an average farm cover of 715 kilos of dry matter per hectare with a growth of 61 and a demand of 74. So we have a, a quite a high demand as 50% of the farm is closed for silage at the minute. Um, so the, the, but there was, a lot, there was a lot of rain at the weekend also, which has left grazing conditions, left the grazing conditions quite difficult. But for, for going ahead for the week, the week ahead, I expect conditions to improve and grass to pass out demand. And in relation to the other silage ground that's left at the moment, when do you intend to cut that silage? So in the next week to 10 days, I'll be hoping to, to cut that. And uh, yeah, there's 50 acres in total there. So we'll be, we'll be cutting that in the next week or 10 days, weather dependent. And uh, we'll be then closing it up as well and, and cutting it in July as well for a second cut. And for the coming week, what kind of covers do you expect the cows to be going into or what grass is available there for those at the moment? Yeah, so we, we um, as I was saying, it has kicked on a small bit there this week. So we'll be, the cows will be entering anywhere from maybe 14 to 1600, 1650. Yeah, so we'll be getting about four days in the paddock with the cows there as well. So, you know, quite happy with, with how the grass growth has, has been, uh, seems to have been there at the minute. Michael, when do you intend to scan the cows? Um, a scan will take place six weeks into the breeding season. Cows that have shown no sign of, of heat. Uh, 30 days after they've been served, they'll be they'll be scanned to see if they're in calf. And uh, we'll also scan, at that stage, we'll also scan some cows or heifers which haven't haven't been cycling seas or any, any issue with them. But the final scan will take place in about mid-August, a month to six weeks after breeding has finished, to see what, what our final figure was. That's great. And the yearlings at the moment that were turned out to grass, how are they performing? Yeah, so the weanlings were, were turned out on the 19th of March. And uh, since turnout, they've been achieving an average daily gain of about 1.2 kilos a day. And um, the bullocks are currently weighing um, an average of 435 kilos, and the heifers have, have a weight of 420 kilos. So I'll be expecting them to to achieve an average daily gain of one kilo over the grazing season before being housed in mid September. And um, they're currently being grazed in three groups: one group heifers, 37 heifers, and two groups of bullocks. 35 to 6 bullocks in each group. Um, so they're currently getting the best grass we have available. They're on a, a, a ground that was reseeded last August. So we'll be hoping to push on with them and, and you know, get them get them pushed on there and achieve the kilo a day. And how did the yearlings that you had last year, how did they perform? Um, so last year, as I, no more than what are we hoping for this year, um, they, they achieved a kilo a day at grass up to the middle of September. The heifers were slaughtered at 20 months of age with a carcass weight of 330 kilos uh, with a confirmation of R plus and a fat cover of an average of three plus. And the bullocks were also, the bullocks were also 
The bullocks were, were slaughtered at an average age of 22 months of age with a confirmation also of R plus, 3 plus, and with a carcass weight of 386. So overall, I was very happy with, with how the, the bullocks and heifers average for, for the year for last year. And you intend to do the same with these yearlings at the moment? Yeah, exactly. So we'll be hoping to, to, to follow, follow the same as last year, maybe house in the middle of September, start drafting heifers from maybe early October, and all heifers should be finished in December. And then the bullocks, the first draft of bullocks will be will be slaughtered, we'll say in mid-December. And then the final draft of bullocks will be in the first week in February for Cavan. That's great, Michael, and the very best to look with the rest of the breeding season. Thanks very much, Catherine. That's all from this week's episode. And my thanks to Michael for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.